During the early years of post-war civil aviation, a small Dutch aircraft builder called Fokker developed a breed of regional turboprops that would become one of the best-selling commercial airliners in history, creating a series of propeller-driven models that would hold a significant place on the world stage of air travel for the next half century, while also seeing success in the seemingly impregnable American market. This humble plane, the F-27 and its Fokker 50 derivative, truly bringing the spirit of friendship to many of the world's more rural locations. The Fokker Company had been founded in February 1912 by Dutch aviator Anthony Fokker, and had, for the first 20 years of its existence, busied itself with the production of various airliners throughout the 1920s and 30s, and at one point was the largest aircraft manufacturer in the world, with bases both in the Netherlands and the United States, although its success was often quid with the threat of bankruptcy, especially following the Wall Street crash of 1929. During World War II, the Fokker Company was forced to cease production after the German invasion in 1940, with the firm's production facilities being confiscated in order to build Bucher BU-181 Bestman trainers and parts for the Junkers Ju-52 transport aircraft. The war eventually culminating in the company's facilities being stripped of all useful parts, while the remainder was bombed into submission by Allied air raids. After the war, attempts were made to restart the company through cash injections by the Dutch government, but due to a surplus of ex-wartime aircraft, including up to 10,000 Douglas C-47 Dakota transport planes, Re-entering the civil aviation market was one wrought with difficulty, the firm's first post-war models being gliders, trainers and autobuses, while also acting as a conversion agent for ex-military C-47s, repurposing them into a commercial role for European airlines. Though the company's first major post-war success was the creation of license-built Gloucester Meteor and Lockheed F-104 Starfighter jets at their new factory near Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, Fokker was still determined to re-enter the civilian market noticing quickly the sudden rise in turboprop-based commercial airliners to replace wartime transport planes in the form of the Vickers Viscount of Britain, the world's first turboprop, and one that rapidly saw widespread success across the globe. It was in this that the Fokker management set its sights on creating a regional airliner that would not only replace older C-47s, but also undercut the Viscount on services into small or unpaved fields in regional or inner city areas the direction of the project being dictated by operators using the C-47 in order to help inform Fokker as to how they would wish their new airliner to improve on the earlier model, the company initially providing a 32-seat airliner as a benchmark from which further development would evolve. With the input of various C-47 operators, Fokker created several early concepts for the design called P-275, among the first being a piston-powered aircraft fitted with Wright Cyclone radial engines before eventually settling on a high-wing aircraft fitted with two Rolls-Royce Dart turboprop engines from the Viscount that would reduce noise and interior vibrations, while also incorporating a pressurised cabin which could seat 28 passengers, the use of a high-wing configuration being to produce a higher lift coefficient than a low-wing competitor, to enable easier ground loading, to improve the view for passengers, and to reduce the possibility of foreign object damage from ingested debris at improvised or unpaved runways. As part of the production process, Fokker introduced innovative construction practices, including a metal-to-metal -metal bonding technique called redux, which resulted in a longer fatigue life, improved aerodynamics, and a lighter structure, the practice having only been used previously by de Havilland of Britain, while in 1953, the model was christened the name Friendship, and four prototypes were produced, two for airborne tests and two for ground testing, the cost of the project being carried by the Netherlands Institute of Aircraft Development. On November 24, 1955, the first prototype, Papa Hotel November Indigo Victor undertook its maiden flight, and after extensive testing, the second prototype was modified to incorporate a three-foot longer fuselage that would be carried over to the production models, this change being required in order to address a revealed tendency for slightly tail-heavy handling and to provide an extra row of seating, increasing the maximum capacity of the airliner to 32, complemented by later Mark 5 to 8 versions of the Dart turboprop engine, which generated improved thrust. In November 1958, after nearly a decade of development, the first F-27, an F-27-100, was delivered to launch customer Aer Lingus of Ireland, with commercial operations beginning the following month. While the promise of a regional airliner suited for unpaved or improvised airstrips in rural areas made it highly successful among carriers across the world, including Norwegian airline Brathen Safe, who put the F-27 to work on services to short runway gravel fields in the mountainous regions of Scandinavia, the New Zealand National Airways Corporation, and to three of the four primary Australian airlines, Trans-Australia Airlines, ANSET, and East-West Airlines, for services across the outback. Sadly, while the number of carriers purchasing the F-27 was varied, there wasn't enough bulk orders to help cover the costs of the project, which meant that Fokker was forced to take out bank loans and seek funding from the Dutch government in order to maintain production, while Fokker's sales agents went globetrotting to drum up support. 
By 1960, though, following superb feedback by customers as to the F-27's performance and low running costs, existing customers, as well as new buyers, truly began to appreciate the airliner's many facets, and demand increased greatly, spurred on by a 1952 agreement made with American builder Fairchild Hiller to have license-built versions of the F-27 be assembled at their factory in Hagerstown, Maryland, the Fairchild F-27 being operated in the United States by carriers including Air South, Air West, Allegheny Airlines, Aloha Airlines, Bonanza Airlines, Ozark Airlines, Pacific Airlines, Piedmont Airlines, and Northern Consolidated Airlines. From the original F-27, a slew of variants were created, including the F-27-200 with more powerful Rolls-Royce engines, the F-27-300 combi plane and troop ship civil cargo combination aircraft, the F-27-400 with Rolls-Royce Dart 7 engines and a combi configuration, as well as a military M version, the stretched F-27-500 with a 4-foot 11-inch longer fuselage that could carry 52 passengers, as well as a military M variant and a specialist F variant for the Australian market with smaller front and rear doors, the F-27-600 quick-change civil cargo airliner, the F-27-700, the cargo variant of the original F-27-100, and two maritime reconnaissance aircraft, the F-27-200 MAR, which was unarmed, and the F-27 Maritime Enforcer, which could be configured to carry either four AS torpedoes or four AM-39 Exocet, Sea Eagle, Harpoon, Maverick, or Sea Skua anti-ship missiles, while in America, Fairchild, independent of Fokker, created a stretched version of the F-27 called the F-227, which featured a six-foot fuselage stretch and could carry 56 passengers, as well as being fitted with a larger cargo area between the cockpit and the passenger cabin. By the beginning of the 1980s, the F-27, while a hugely successful airliner, was starting to tail off as newer models came on the market to replace it, its main competitors including the de Havilland Dash 7 and later Dash 8 of Canada, and the ATR-42 of France, both of which presented improved performance characteristics to the comparatively sluggish friendship, while production of license-built Fairchild F-27 and F-227 models had ended in 1974 with 78 units built. Therefore, in November 1983, Fokker undertook a series of studies as to potentially upgrading its aging product list, considering replacements for both the F-27 and the company's first regional jet airliner model, the F-28 Fellowship, with two proposals coming forward, the Fokker F-27 Mark 050, or Fokker 50, an upgraded turboprop model based largely on the same underpinnings as the F-27, and the Fokker 100 jet. In essence, the Fokker 50 was the same aircraft as the F-27, but incorporated various refinements and improvements to the overall design including the adoption of Pratt & Whitney Canada PW127B turboprop engines that reduced fuel consumption by 30%, and the evolution of its airframe to incorporate composite materials, adjustments to the wing design, and a higher degree of cockpit automation through early electronic flight instrument systems or EFIS. To help deliver the Fokker 50, the company partnered with various international firms, with the wing being produced by Belgian aerospace firm Sabka, fuselage sections by French aircraft manufacturer Dassault Aviation, flaps and other components by German aerospace company Messerschmitt Bocco Blom, and vertical and horizontal stabilizers by Japanese multinational corporation Fuji Heavy Industries, with the first Fokker 50 prototype performing its maiden flight on December 28, 1985. During testing, though, various teething problems and other delays both pushed back the release of the aircraft by a year, but also added a significant cost to the overall program, the Fokker 50 being eventually launched in 1987 with German airline DLT and Ansett Australia and would give rise to several later versions of the aircraft, including the F-27 Mark 0502, sometimes known as the Fokker 5200, which had a reconfigured interior layout and altered aft emergency exit, and the F-27 Mark 0604, or Fokker 60, a stretched version that increased the fuselage length by 3.34 feet in front of the wing and 2.63 feet aft, while also introducing an increased design weight and a large cargo door in the forward right section of the fuselage. Sadly, by the time the Fokker 50 was launched in 1987, replacing the F-27 after a production run of 586 units, the market for small regional turboprops had largely been soaked up by the Dash 8 and the ATR-42, and, unlike the preceding F-27, its lack of recognition meant the airliner wasn't sold or built under license in the United States. With this, coupled to the cost overruns incurred for both the development of the Fokker 50 and Fokker 100, meaning that by 1994, the company was facing severe losses, which led to cuts in the production output of all its models, forcing an ambitious corporate restructuring that included attempts at renegotiating prices with its suppliers, but by July 1995, the firm had entered discussions with the Dutch government as to a possible bailout, while parent company, Daimler-Benz Aerospace AG, or DASA, would only provide a bailout of its own if supported by the Dutch government. 
Sadly, with the failure to reach a settlement, Fokker was forced into bankruptcy and Fokker 50 production ended. The final aircraft, Echo Tango Alpha Kilo Victor, being delivered to Ethiopian Airlines in April 1997, rounding out a production run of 213 units, six of which were the Fokker 50 200, all sold to military customers, and four being the Fokker 60, again all sold to military customers. In terms of accidents, the Fokker F-27 was involved in 31 crashes that killed 1,011 people, the Fairchild F-27 suffered 23 crashes that killed 469 people, and the Fokker 50 suffered 9 crashes, killing 103 people, the first accident being on June 10, 1960, when Trans-Australian Airlines Flight 538 crashed in the sea near Mackay, Queensland, Australia, killing 29 people, the cause of which was never uncovered, but was critical in developing an in-flight recorder system that would eventually become an industry standard for future airliners. The deadliest accident involving the F-27 occurred on August 16, 1986, when a Sudan Airways F-27-400M was shot down by members of the Sudan People's Liberation Army during the height of the 21-year Second Sudanese Civil War. The aircraft, flying from Malakal to Khartoum, being struck just after takeoff by a Soviet-made Strela II shoulder-mounted surface-to-air missile, killing all 60 aboard. The deadliest accident involving the Fairchild F-27, meanwhile, was also its most notable, when, while en route from Montevideo, Uruguay, to Santiago, Chile via Mendoza, Argentina, Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571, carrying 19 members of the Old Christians Club Rugby Union team, along with their families, supporters and friends, struck the side of a mountain due to pilot error in the remote Argentinian Andes, leaving the few survivors to endure a 72-day fight against bitter cold, avalanches, starvation and a severe lack of medical treatment the remaining passengers being forced to turn to cannibalism, until rugby player Nando Parado and medical student Roberto Canessa trekked for over 10 days before finding help, which ultimately rescued 16 people, the story of their experience forming the basis of a 1974 book by British writer Piers Paul Reed and the 1993 film Alive, starring Ethan Hawke and Josh Hamilton. The deadliest accident involving the Fokker 50 occurred on February 10, 2004, when Kish Air Flight 7170 crashed near Sharjah International Airport in the United Arab Emirates after the accidental deployment of the reverse thrusters by the pilots in mid-flight, causing the aircraft to stall and crash, killing 43 of the 46 passengers and crew aboard. While proposals were made to restart Fokker 50 production in India, with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, this scheme never materialised, and although both F-27s and 50s remained a prominent feature on regional air services across the globe, by the mid-2010s they had been largely superseded by younger variations of its rivals, including the Dash 8 Q400 and the ATR-72, meaning that only small, isolated numbers of aircraft remain in operation into the 2020s. Regardless, the legacy of the Fokker F-27 is one that helped to reshape the face of regional aviation during the 1960s as it introduced air travel to many rural or hard-to-reach parts of the world. And although the success of the airliner was sadly not replicated with the later Fokker 50, the development of which would instead be instrumental in the company's demise, the aircraft that resulted from the 39-year production run of the model were tough, hard-working airplanes that built a reputation for sturdiness and practicality.